At this point in the build, we need to decide whether we're going to build a hinged point or a solid point turnout, because uh, the next step in the process is to put our PC board ties in the fixture. Uh, depending on whether we want to build a hinge point or a solid point turnout, that will determine where we're going to place some of the ties. A solid point turnout is a turnout where the, uh, the closure rail and the switch points are a solid piece of rail. So they extend all the way from the top of the frog right down to the end of the switch points. And they're soldered onto a throw bar tie. And when the turnout is operated, the rail just, uh, just flexes like that. It's, uh, it hinges on this tie here. A hinged point turnout is one in which the switch points are actually separated from the closure rail. So this is one piece of rail here and then a separate piece here. And the, uh, the points are actually hinged like that and the hinge is fashioned from uh, using rail joiners that allows it to to move back and forth. The advantage of uh, a hinge point turnout is that they move a little freer. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of uh, effort to move these back and forth. Uh, the downside is it uh, takes a little bit more effort to make a turnout this way because you have to cut the rails off and, and make the hinge uh, from a couple of rail joiners when doing a solid point turnout, they're a lot easier because it's just simply one piece of rail soldered onto the throw bar tie. And I would guess that the vast majority of modelers building turnouts in our fixtures opt for solid point turnouts because they're a lot easier to do, they're faster, and they're, they're more trouble free because there's no um, joint in this rail at all. It's just a single piece. Um, there's enough distance between where it hinges and the end of the points to allow this to flex quite easily. It takes almost no effort at all to move this back and forth. One example where you would opt for a hinged point over a solid point would be in a piece of special work like this uh, double slip switch. It's not possible to get a long enough distance between the switch points uh, and a hinge point to allow you to bend the rail freely because this is so short we have to actually cut the rail off the closure rail and hinge it. Uh, especially in a slip switch because there's four pieces of rail moving back and forth at the same time. So if we were to try and bend it right here, all four pieces, it would be so stiff that no switch machine would be able to, uh, to operate it. Uh, and the same is true on this three-way turnout here. Um, this set of points is so short that it's not possible to, to solder it up here and flex the whole thing. So we have to cut it off and put a, a rail joiner on and make a hinged point turnout out of it. Some of you may be familiar with my Central New Jersey Bronx terminal layout, and on this layout I had to use hinge point turnouts on the entire thing. Um, some of the turnouts were so short uh, that there was no other way to make them operable other than to use hinged points. And I used a bit of a unique technique on those, um, making uh, um, pivot points on the throw bar from spikes. And I have a, a detailed video where you can see how this is done. It's included in our library of videos on our website um, if you want to watch to see how, how that process worked.